Hi folks, this video is about putting sentences into prenex form with chain of equivalence proofs. What I want you to do is pause your videos and see if you can figure out what this sentence would look like in PNF. Okay, let's talk about how to do this. When, when we put this sentence in a prenex normal form, what we're doing is we're using those equivalence principles that we've learned. For example, De Morgan's for quantifiers or the Boolean definition of the conditional. And we need to get all the quantifiers stacked up out front. What that means is we can't even leave this negation symbol out here because that would not be all the quantifiers wide scope. That would leave this connective as, a wide, sc as wide scope. So we even need to push that negation symbol in. When you do this, my first recommendation is to get rid of all of the arrows because arrows hide negation symbols and the antecedent of an arrow is a hidden negation symbol. And since quantifiers flip when they go past negation symbols because of De Morgan's for quantifiers, we're gonna need to make all of those negations explicit. So the first thing I did is I took each of those arrows and I put it into blue here, into its uh, Boolean form. So there's one negation that becomes here, that's one of the arrows antecedent, and then another negation comes here because of the other arrows antecedent. Now the next thing that you can do is start to get rid of some negation symbols. So anytime that two negations appear next to each other, I just like to get rid of them. This is not necessarily the most efficient way to do it because I'm not, I'm not getting rid of all the double negations at once, but I just like to keep my, keep my work clean. So this is, there's many different ways you could arrive at the correct answer here. Okay, after I did that, what I did is I need to start pushing these negations past the quantifiers. And I recommend you start from the outside in. It's not the only way to do it, but it's very helpful. So the first thing I did is I took this negation, pushed it past that quantifier. And since this was the exact same step, I pushed this one past that quantifier too. So I, t I, I tend to not get confused as long as I'm only applying one rule at a time. Once you start doing multiple transformations with different rules at the same time, it's very easy to make a mistake, so I don't recommend it. Okay, now, now that I got some more negations next to each other, I just lopped those off and got, got rid of those too. So we're starting, look, now I've got a connective wide scope here and we're starting to slowly simplify, get, get all of our work simplified. Now, see, once this negation is past this quantifier, I can start to use null quantification because none, there's no negations sitting immediately on quantifiers. I can start moving these quantifiers past this disjunction or this one past that disjunction. So let's just, let's just work stepwise to make sure we don't lose our place. I'm gonna take this universal and this existential and I'm gonna move them both wider than this disjunction. What that means is I don't pick them up and place them in front of this negation. You only go one scoping at a time. So moving past this disjunction slots them in here behind that negation symbol. It would be incorrect. It would be an invalid inference or an invalid equivalence in order to move them past that negation symbol. So once I move them both here, again, I need to push this past them before I can move them further on this other disjunction. So this is why I applied um, De Morgan's for quantifiers again. All right, now that I did that, um, they have to both flip notice. And now, now there's nothing impeding my quantifiers. I can just start pulling them all out front. So with no quantification, I can move these two out front and I can also move this one out front. So here's one correct answer, E, X, E, Y, and all Z, all W. Now, let me tell you, there's, this is not the only correct answer. So if this is not what you got, let me say this. The order of these quantifiers, there's multiple correct answers rearranging the order of these quantifiers, but not which quantifier they are. So if you got a universal for the X, then you did something wrong. Or if you got a universal for the Y, or, or an existential for the Z, or an existential for the W. So which quantifier you got for each variable cannot be changed. That, that is absolutely fixed. But let me just give you an example. Whenever you have quantifiers of the same type, you are always allowed to reorder them. This is called the reorder equivalence. And we'll see later on soon enough uh, exactly why this holds. So, so instead of this answer with X, Y, Z, W, I could have switched the X and the Y, which I did here. Or I could have switched the W and the Z. That, all of these are equivalent. In fact, this is a little harder to understand. So don't, don't worry if this doesn't make sense at this point, but this is sort of looking forward into the future. Um, notice that this X bind is in a relation with Y, Z, and, and W. X is everywhere. It started out originally as the, as the quantifier with the widest scope. That means that when you're reordering quantifiers of different type, you have to be incredibly careful. And actually, you cannot move this X past any of those other, the Z or the W, because they're of different types. But since this Y quantifier is not connected to the Z in a relation, not connected to the W in a relation, it's also possible to move that Y around. But I'm, again, I'm not allowed to move the X around. So there's two other different possibilities. 
So don't worry about memorizing all of these possible arrangements. Just, just know this, which quantifiers I got here are absolutely fixed. And oftentimes there's many different orders um, that are possible. Okay, thanks.